Hi, I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Homeschool and we're back today with another video in our sensor testing series. Now, today we're going to be talking about potentiometers, but I'm going to take a slightly different approach with, uh, with this information in that I noticed on some of the longer videos, like the last one in this series was, uh, I had an issue with keeping people watching through the entire length of the video. And I get it that some of the longer videos can be boring, but some of you uh, don't really want to sit and have to watch for 25, 30 minutes. So I'm really going to make an effort to make this video shorter and more to the point, one piece at a time. So we're going to focus today on just how the sensor is supposed to operate. Talk about how it's set up, what the wires going to the sensor are, how it's supposed to be operating, and then I'll follow it up this week with another video when we'll dive into how you address different concerns with it, how you do some of the diagnostic procedures, and how you come to the conclusion of I have a power problem or a ground problem or a sensor problem. So let's go ahead and get started on understanding how these sensors operate. Okay, what we've got here is a drawing of what a potentiometer would look like in a wiring diagram for a vehicle. And just to give it a name, we're going to call this a throttle position sensor because this looks like some of the older thr throttle position sensors. So what you, what you want to understand with these is that the actual resistor inside this sensor is not going to change resistance value. That's not how we're changing the voltage signal in this case. This resistor is got a fixed value and it's not going to change. You have five volts supplied to the sensor and then you have a sensor ground or sensor return. People are going to call it different uh, things. It may be labeled as 5V, 5V plus, V ref, ref uh, for the power side and your uh, ground side could be called sensor ground, sensor return, ground, uh, anything to indicate that this is the ground side and this is the power side. And then your other wire is going to be your signal. It could be labeled, you know, in the case of a throttle position sensor on a wiring diagram, it could be labeled TPS, it could be labeled TPS signal, TPS sig, it could be labeled just sig or signal. So it's, it's good to just kind of have an idea of what each of these wires are and the function they serve so that you can kind of figure out what names go to what wires because usually it's pretty clear, but every now and then you run into some that are a little confusing. But let's talk about how this gets a varying voltage signal to the signal wire as whatever component this is. And in this case, we're talking about like a throttle blade uh, while, when that changes position. So what this resistor is, is actually a resistive surface that connects the two ends here inside the sensor and this signal wire is connected to a wiper arm that moves across that surface. So when the wiper arm is all the way down here at this side, you have this much of the resistor surface that has consumed voltage and that much voltage is gone by the time it gets to where this uh, signal wire is connected to the wiper arm. So at this point, let's say where it's at right now, just for the drawing, let's say that this resistor has consumed three volts and that there's two volts left. So your voltage on this wire, or sorry, on this signal at this point would be two volts because three volts has been consumed and there's only two volts left to be consumed in the rest of this resistor. This wiper arm and signal wire is not a complete circuit per se. It's not something that has a power and a ground and a load. It is essentially a voltmeter lead. It doesn't consume voltage. It just looks at what the voltage potential is wherever it's touching. So on an older throttle position sensor, it, you know, they had a common specification of about 0.5 volts at idle. So that would be with this wiper arm almost all the way over here to the other end where you had only half a volt left 
after four and a half volts had been consumed across the beginning of the resistor. So as you move that up, you're slowly going to have higher and higher voltage because this arm is going to be after less and less of the resistor. So once you get it all the way wide open and it's up here near the top, hardly any voltage has been consumed by the resistor and you're going to have about 4.5 to 4.8 volts was common to see wide open throttle on some of those throttle position sensors. So it's actually a very simple setup and all it does is as this arm moves the voltage on here on the signal wire changes because it's at a different point along the resist resistive surface and there's different voltage available there. The points I have laid out here, I'll just, we'll just walk through them. The key, uh, the, the key point, the most important thing is that understanding what this circuit is and what's going on is going to be the key to diagnosing these systems. If you understand this, you know, you don't need someone to walk you through, oh well, You've got, to, you've got to check this wire to make sure you have that. You've got to check this wire to make sure you have that. Once you understand this and you understand what's going on, you'll be able to come up with your own test methods. And you'll be able to come up with your own way of checking it that works for you and that's fastest for you because not everybody's going to check everything the exact same way. But understanding this system is the key to diagnosing it. So, as we talked about, the supply voltage is, or should be, consumed across this resistor. And if this resistor and this circuit is working exactly how it's supposed to be, you'll have 5 volts going into the resistor and you'll have 0 volts coming out of it. Now, in the real world, you may see up to 100 millivolts on the ground side at any point here just from uh, resistance in the connections where it plugs into the sensor any of the connections in the harness as it goes back to the computer, you may see up to 100 millivolts left on the ground side, and that would be okay. But we're calling it zero just because on a wiring diagram we pretend it's a perfect world. The signal wire is connected to the wiper, that's what we talked about, it's right here. It moves with whatever the component is, and it sweeps across the resistor surface from one end of the sensor to the other. And then different points here relate to different voltage levels. As I said, if you were all the way right here at the very beginning, you would still have five volts because it hadn't gone through any of the resistor yet. About halfway through, it's gone through about half of the resistor, so you'll have about 2.5 volts of your five left. And then if you were all the way over here at the end, you would have gone through all of the resistor, and then you would have zero volts left, and that's what your signal would be showing. And that's why when you're doing some of these testing procedures, you're going to do a slow, steady sweep and you're going to watch for dropouts because it's the contacts between the wiper arm and the surface of the resistor that get worn out and that's your most common point of failure on these kinds of sensors. But we'll get into that in the next video. So, that is a quick, basic look at how these work. And there's not really much more to go in depth on. Uh, we'll talk about uh, this information again when we go through the diagnostic procedure, but diagnosing these systems, testing each of the legs of the circuit, that's gonna be the video that we dive in a little bit deeper on, but I'll still try to keep it uh, short enough. But I'll put all of these videos in a playlist so those of you who want to watch all of the information in a row as if it were one video, you can just watch all of the videos inside that playlist. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, I hope you found the information useful and I hope it helps you. Uh, thank you for being a part of what we're trying to do here on the channel. Uh, feel free to check out some of the other videos we got here. I'll put one like right, like right here. I'll put it right there. If that works, right, right there? Okay. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video.